Why do you teach here at Long Beach City College? Full-time job opened up and I got lucky. Um, we, you know, I, I, for six years I was a, an adjunct faculty member at a, a bunch of different colleges and we, um, my wife and I lived up in West LA and uh, we'd been in the same one bedroom apartment for like eight years and we'd saved up enough money to where we could start looking to buy um, and for what we could afford in Culver City which is a like a two bedroom condo and not the best part of Culver City we could buy a, a three bedroom house with a backyard in Long Beach in a, in a, in a good neighborhood and so um, we bought the house in 2010 and I was still doing the adjunct teaching and then a job opened up here in 2011 and I got lucky and I got it. <laughs> I mean, it's no, there's no like, I just, I, you know, these jobs are not, um, there, there's not that many of them. Um, and so to get one that was three miles from my house, um, or no commute, tenure tracked, I'm tenured now. I just got back from sabbatical. Wow. Congratulations. Um, yeah. Uh, it's, um, it's, it, it's a it's a good thing. It's a really good thing. It makes my life as a filmmaker um, that much more feasible because I have I have a real job, a regular job, and, and uh, um, steady income and health benefits and all that sort of stuff. And so um, it gives me an opportunity to go out and make stuff and not have to worry that that it's going to kill me financially because I, I have a job. I have a good job. Um, and uh, you know, I, I went to community college. Uh, that's the first thing I did before I, I, um, I transferred up to San Francisco State. And so um, I kind of understand this world um, pretty well. The, um, you know, neither one of my parents went to college. My father has his um, GED. And so I kind of understand coming into this um, where you might come from a family that's, you know, like you're maybe going to be the first person from your family to graduate from college and that sort of stuff. Not being able to afford to pay for four years at a, uh, you need to do the first two years at community college because it's just too expensive to do four years at a UCLA or wherever, Cal State Long Beach. Um, so I kind of understand the circumstances that the students are coming in um, from because of my own experience. Um, and, and it feels really good to also make um, the filmmaking world feel possible for a group of students who probably feel like it's not possible. Um, this is not, these are not kids that are going to um, SC or you know, NYU or those kinds of places. And that even though, you know, LA is 20 miles away, it feels like another world um, when you're coming from a working class background um, and your family, and your dad's not an agent or a lawyer uh, <laughs> yeah. and it doesn't feel like you're connected to it and so it feels um, you know it feels like you know I'm doing something useful in the world to make it feel um, feasible for them possible um, that they could get into this field get into this industry it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to get to be Christopher Nolan or whoever because there's lots of people who want to be Christopher Nolan or Wes Anderson or Pick whoever you want to pick, um, but finding um, finding a job, finding something that they like to do within the film and television industry um, is absolutely possible for them, and um, it feels good to be able to sort of tell them that with authority and mean it, because it is true they can. Um, so that that feels better um, for me than um, being someplace else with a bunch of kids who. You know, <laughs> they're going to be fine. They're going to be fine no matter what. Um, if you can afford that tuition, you're going to be fine. And the connections. Yeah. That when they get out. Yeah. Is, but even if, the, even if they don't do anything in the, like, you know, there's all kinds of, this has got nothing to do with filmmaking, but there's all kinds of evidence that just having a degree and the value of it, it's worth like $500,000 over the course of a career compared to a high school diploma. Um, just having a degree. And like, but, those kids that come out of one of those schools and they come out, yeah, they have connections, they probably have a certain degree of wealth, not all of them, um, they're going to be fine. 
they're gonna be fine yes they may again they may not get to be the next whoever but they're gonna live a nice upper middle class life live in a nice house live in a safe environment all that sort of stuff and trying to help these kids see that that's possible feels more useful to me um, so yeah that's why I'm here do you see a different eagerness in some of the community college students versus if you've ever taught at a, at a private school I've or taught a, four -year? a couple of private schools a couple of private four-year schools which who, both of which had really really good students I don't want to yeah, see I don't I don't okay wanna, that's okay no, no, that's no, a no, bad no. question then. no no, I, no it's I, not I don't want to make you no, okay, no, no, no I'm, it's not I'm, that I'm, I'm talking about my last oh my last response I don't want to make because I had some really good students at those schools yeah really smart students um I can I can ask another question no 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 it's not that I'm trying to what I don't it's not that the community college students have more eagerness what I actually see is the opposite is I can see the way the world weighs on them and how they feel like this is never going to happen for me I can see how that's that just becomes but this all feels so um out of reach and that is um that's heartbreaking you know to see that it's complete opposite of what you see in a lot of the, those other schools where those kids don't necessarily feel like that yeah. um, and so that's again that's part of the gig that's part of this job is like no and and also it's like we've um, sometimes when you're young and you you define this notion of like who I'm gonna be if I'm not Quentin Tarantino or you know Christopher Nolan or any of those kinds of people then I haven't made it mm no that's not true um, and like helping them to understand that they can make stuff um, they have the capability like teaching them how to make stuff first of all teaching them how to get the camera up on the sticks and how to light a shot and all that sort of stuff helping them to understand just those tools um, and then just giving them the the um, helping them to find the agency like I can do this I can make something if I want to um, that's I think really really crucial so that um, who, who the hell knows what's going to happen in 10 or 15 years with your life like no one knows but the feeling that um, if I get an idea if I feel compelled by something if I feel something strongly enough that I think is a film that they can then and they know how to use the tools they can grab the tools and try to go out and make it um, they don't need anybody else's permission I think that's a really really important thing um, to, to help them feel that to help them feel that agency um, making it uh, making it in this industry I don't I don't know what that I, I, I as I get older I have no idea what that means anymore um, so yeah I don't know I don't know if that answers the question yeah it does it actually sparks uh, several other questions um, firstly um, what are the stories that a lot of your students want to tell here at uh, Long Beach City College I mean, they vary documentary or? well yeah it's like it's mostly narrative there are some documentary documentaries can be the strongest stuff not always stuff that happens in their life stuff that they that they find interesting stuff that's typical of college students and then I'll have students that are telling completely sort of out of the blue stories like I have a student who made a, a film that is very much influenced by um, third cinema do you know what third cinema is third cinema was a term that was um, sort of created out of a manifesto by a couple of filmmakers from Argentina and Brazil I want so to say. like dogma but for for yeah but South America very, yeah but this is in the late 60s and oh. it's it's um, highly political filmmaking very much interested in a kind of anti-colonial anti-imperial anti-imperialist um, ideology and um, it's just really interesting to me that I had a student that even knew what third cinema is <laughs> it's not something yeah. that we're teaching um, you know in our in our introductory courses so he knew what third cinema was and so he wanted to make something that was um, sort of referenced that style as well as uh, Bertolt Brecht and Jean-Luc Godard so the point I'm making is I get because it is such a diverse student body I get 
a wide sort of bandwidth here of different possibilities of what the students can be making. Um, so that's really interesting. Um, they do come in, but they come in also with less resources. We have less resources as a school than you know some of the bigger film schools, and the students have less resources. They cannot come in and go, well, I've got twenty-five thousand dollars to make my student film, you know, which some students at some of the other schools do. Um, but as I constantly tell them, limitations are absolutely part of filmmaking and something that we have to sort of get used to and start to use. Like you got to use your limitations. Do you think that helps with their storytelling? It can. I mean, I I almost think that this is like um, you're building you're building the proper muscles for making this sort of stuff. Um, the example I use for them is someone like the Coen brothers who you know are making these films in this range from 15 million dollars to 35 million dollars and they are also talk about how they don't have enough money and enough time right which to my students having 15 to 35 million dollars seems like you would have plenty of money and plenty of time but it is the nature of the thing just the nature of filmmaking that there's never enough of either one of those things and so it becomes a muscle that you need to exercise um, or that you need to build and then exercise um, because you've got to figure out okay I thought we were going to have a full day to get this scene we only have an hour so how are we going to do it because that's going to happen over and over and over again I don't care what level you're working at um, that happens all the time and so that becomes a muscle that you have to develop like figuring out a way what is this scene about how are we planning on shooting it how can we simplify that and still have the thing be what it's supposed to be um, so that it makes them better filmmakers just being able to sort of deal with that situation because it happens all the time um, the most I call, tell them constantly the most important commodity um, that they have is time and there's never enough of it so you try um, you try to get as much out of your shoot days you try to make your shoot days as long as you possibly can and get as much shot on your shoot days as you can um, because you're not getting that time back um, so it, it can make their storytelling stronger I think it just it makes their, their filmmaking better and do most of the students come in with the idea even if they don't totally know what they want to be that they want to be on a level of a Tarantino like, or some kind of an auteur rather than they want to be working in the industry making incredible money like they, they want to sort of put their name on something or they don't mind being part of a huge project it's, and making a living it's both it's both and I, I like something like the class where they get to make their their own short film that is does a lot for self-discovery um, it usually it one or two one they're gonna go one or two ways they're gonna do that and and it's going to be um, so exciting even though it's so stressful that that it sort of cements for them okay this is what I want to do I want to have my name on things and uh, for the other half of them they'll go oh my god why would anyone want to do this <laughs> why would you want to go through all this stress right. you know trying to find a diner you know nobody will let us shoot in the diner or if they do they all want to be there and so our dialogue is not going to work or whatever um, that they'll go I you know I want to do this but I do not want to try to put together my own projects let somebody put it together and I'll come in and run the camera or whatever yeah so it's about half and half